people can be healed of cancer. I know they can. Yes. Most definitely. She had a tumor that you could feel that was the size of a light bulb. And that tumor is gone. What do your doctors say? My doctors, I would say, are amazed. Certainly I will, of course, Margaret. Are you in pain? Oh, certainly I'll pray. Just hold on there for one moment now. And come in now right on. Ireland has a tradition of faith healers that have used charm, mystery and showmanship to comfort the needy. Janice Carrick and her husband, Moss, live in Newcastle, West County, Limerick. Janice can heal personally or over the phone. What was the first healing you ever did on anybody? It was in Butterfant, actually, here in Ireland. And we had been invited to a private house to a prayer meeting. And actually, it was Moss who put his hand on this lady's leg. She had an ulcer. And she'd had this ulcer for 35 years. And it had flared up but, uh, off and on. But this particular time, it was giving her a lot of pain. And he simply said, Jesus, I ask you to remove this ulcer and free her from the pain. So the next morning a phone call came and she was all excited and she said she'd been to the doctor and he'd taken off the dressing mm -hmm. and there wasn't even any inflammation. It was gone and to, I, I haven't spoken to her now for a couple of years but I, it had completely gone. And that must have given you a huge... Uh, sense of achievement, a bit of a, a buzz almost? Yes, it did because I was sort of very new in the walk then and it gave me a feeling of elation that I don't get anymore. Speaking in tongues. What, yes. is, what is that? What is going on when you're speaking in tongues? Well, actually, tongues is a really wonderful language. The Carrig's reputation is growing beyond Limerick. People from all over Ireland take their faith and their illnesses to Janice. Leukemia, depression, Crohn's disease, tumours. No ailment is incurable, according to Janice. Sometimes we pray for the wrong thing. Can any of you remember doing something I did years ago? I was praying for a fella. <laughs> and I went to every mass, three masses a day. Thank God. <laughs> The Lord didn't answer the prayer. <laughs> all is well. The Lord is saying, all is well. We praise you, Jesus. And we know that, you know, Jesus truly can heal. He has said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. how I got through those years because in the first few of them I don't think I depended on God I was angry you know I will actually say that I went through hell on earth from a human point of view and that's hard you know um, I lost my freedom more than anything I mean the physical body is necessary for your freedom you know of course there's an awful lot of poor me <laughs> I went through years of self-pity you know but the hardest part is when you're in a place like that nobody can understand you and nobody can help you Neve Kelly had Crohn's disease Crohn's disease is a recurring disorder that causes inflammation of the digestive tract she felt because of her illness her 20s were robbed I went from a size like four 
a four to six and trousers to size 14 <laughs> in three months because of steroids, you know. And whether you've Crohn's or not, it was a bit vain, you know. People didn't even recognize me because so of the you, medication. You, you were put on very strong medication to treat the Crohn's as steroids. I was in absolute agony because basically, like, it is ulcers throughout your uh, intestine. So when you eat, it's just excruciating agony when you actually eat, you know. On the point of agreeing to major surgery on her intestine, Neve decided to visit Janice. So I got into my car and I was packed a bag to go into the Limerick Regional Hospital. And I just had a vision of this massive operation because I knew that I had it in a lot of places. And my life was flashing before my eyes. Um, I was, I, I, at that point, I would rather have died than have gone through that. So I just decided in my mind, it came into my mind to ring Janice. Now, I hadn't been in touch with her for years or, you know, anything like that. She um, said a prayer on me, and it was a very simple prayer. She put her hands on my shoulders and she said to Jesus, um, that this lovely young girl is here in front of you today and you have the power to do all things and let your will, will be worked out in her. Um, and she asked that I be healed, if it was in his will, and then she prayed in tongues, um, a small bit, and anointed me with holy oil. So I was expecting something full of hocus pocus. I didn't know what was going to happen, you know. But it was a very gentle, simple, loving prayer, and it was a very normal prayer, just asking him to interfere in my life if it was his, if it was his will, and that I had my whole life ahead of me, and it was nothing for him to heal me. Then I sat in the room and actually a complete feeling of exhaustion came over me. And they were continuing to pray and other people were calling and I said to her, Janice, I have to leave. And she said, fine. So I left her house and I went into um, my car, I was outside the door and I sat into the car. And I believe it was then I received my miracle. The first thing I said was, God, if this is heaven, I want to go now. Because um, I can still actually remember the feeling, you know. Within about two minutes of that happening, a feeling of heat infiltrated. It was like a hand was actually put down in my intestines. And I felt this huge surge of heat all around there and coming up my intestines. And I knew something was going on. But I remember saying to God, how am I going to get back home? I can't drive, I can't think, I can't do anything. I just wanted to sit there. I was so, I was, I was, I was actually in ecstasy. I was out of my mind, actually. So I drove back home. I don't remember how. I don't know how we indicated, pressed the brakes. Um, so I got home, and I don't really remember much else other than waking up. And my father knocked at the door, and he asked me to go for um, something to eat. And I said to him, my natural reaction was, I can't. Mm -hmm. So um, I said, no, Dad, I can't. And he said, well, you have to eat. You haven't eaten in a week. So I said, OK. So I went out to a restaurant in Limerick. So I started eating and wasn't trusting God at that stage. I was still sitting at the table, like, terrified of each mouthful. And um, I was absolutely perfect. And I have never had a Crohn's tax since. And I'm not on any medication for Crohn's. And if you told me back then, or even in my early 20s, that I could sit here and say that today, I wouldn't have believed it. The Lord has touched you right now and healed you. Praise you, Jesus. The local Lord bishop has embraced Janice's methods of healing you, and has given the group a home in a Catholic church in Abbeyfield, Limerick. I think it's an ulcer in the eye. The Lord is healing that ulcerated eye. We praise you and we believe in your greatness, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We glorify your holy name. The Lord has just touched an ear, left ear. Someone has come in with that. At home. each meeting, the Lord will speak in your ear and give you the, the illnesses that you have to, that he wants to cure there. Very often during the meeting, the Lord will give what's known as a word of knowledge. Yeah. And he'll say that there is somebody here who has, say, a fracture in their right leg and it hasn't been healing. And to know that when you walk out the door today, that, that is healed. Jesus administrates the healing and the Holy Spirit manifests them. The Holy Spirit is the power and the Holy Spirit is the one who enables me to hear and to enables, the, who shows us, allows us to witness and recognize the healing has taken place.
That was quite a, um, a guarantee you make when you say you definitely will be healed. You, you guarantee to people that they're going to be healed. I go strictly by the word of God where James 5.13 says, um, is anyone among you sick? Call for the elders of the church, lay hands on them, anoint them with oil, and they will be healed. I'm fully confident in what I do for the Lord. The Lord will never let me down, ever. He never has and he never will. Janice was brought up in a poor neighbourhood of Wellington, New Zealand. Her mother was only 16 when Janice was born. Her father was an American Marine who was passing through the country. As an independent little girl, Janice became fascinated with Jesus. What does your mother think of you and your healing? My mother always believed in me because um, she knew, she had a deep sense that what I was saying was true because I was so persistent mm -hmm. with it. And then after calling in the Protestant minister to sort me out, she was really convinced. But I never stepped away from uh, my faith. I always had a presence here with me. I don't know if it was an angel or the Holy Spirit, but even on my bicycle there, I would get overwhelmed, this overwhelming sensation. I think it was a baptism in the Holy Spirit to kneel down and pray. And I'd say to the other kids, kneel down, kneel down, and they'd all keep running. By the time she was eight years old, she decided she should be baptized and arranged it herself. I'm going to ask you to do something that nearly 50,000 people did in Scotland. I'm going to ask you to do something that thousands of people have done in, in the last 12 months. I'm going to ask you to... When the famous evangelist Billy Graham came to town, a very young Janice decided she had to go. The experience changed the course of her life. You want to leave this stadium a new man, a new woman, a new boy, a new girl. I'm going to ask... I remember hearing on the grapevine um, that Billy Graham was coming, and I heard that Billy Graham was a great evangelist, and I picked up that he was going to be talking about God. And I just remember walking along the street and hundreds and hundreds of people around me and somebody asking me, was I heading to Billy Graham? And I said I was and they asked me, was I alone? I said I was and they picked me up. It was a man and put me on his shoulders. And of course I couldn't really understand what he was saying, but I had an inner knowledge that I would one day be doing that. Do you love your fellow man? There were speakers all around and I can remember hearing the preaching and seeing people clapping and being in awe of what he was saying. But just listening, I just knew this was going to be me. Moss, what's it like living with the healer? It's uh, awesome. <laughs> I need never worry about getting sick. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, I'd love to, you to do me a drawing that you always do, and we can send one in a letter to that little boy called Gulam. That you gave the money to. The phone is a bit quiet tonight. It must be the bank. Janice works for Jesus 24 7. After a visit to India, she and Moss decided to set up Calcutta Aid, a charity which helps the poor and the homeless. Every year they visit and help in whatever way they can. What would be your, your dream scenario? My absolute dream scenario yeah. with my husband beside me yeah. would be to take the gospel to the world. Because, you know, when the Lord instructed the disciples to go out, he said, go out to the whole world. And that's what I would love to do. Could you handle that? Could you handle the ministry dealing with, you know, the world? No problem. Absolutely no problem. With the Lord beside me and directing me, the world is nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm ready. <laughs> and I was ready to meet a family living just outside Abbeyfield who wanted a blessing for their baby. I wasn't sure what to expect, devout Catholics or happy, clappy hippies. I ask you also, Jesus. And I heard these people say, um, oh, it's powerful, you know. <laughs> so um, I thought, well, I must go and see what this powerful stuff is. I was frightened, actually, you know, to hold my hands up. I so I think, oh, I'm not holding my hands up in here, you know. <laughs> I, um, this family was happy to clap, but also happy to combine that with traditional Catholicism. You know? yeah. 
I think the whole atmosphere there is so joyful. Do you like going to them? Could yeah, they're really good. Why do you like going to them? Sometimes people would say that, you know, maths is boring and that, and it's just a chance to have, you know, more kind of an active, more singing and it's more joyful, I think. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the church gets worried at all by the work that you're doing? Because not only are you healing people, or, as you say, being a vessel for healing people, but you're going out to people's houses, you're praying with them, you're blessing them, you're on the phone blessing them, and you're effectively doing the work that a priest should be doing. Well, I don't think so. I think that the priests are quite relieved, really, because the burden on the priests at the moment is huge. And I think that they're quite relieved to think there's somebody out there that can lighten the burden a little bit. Of course I can't do anything that the priests can do. So maybe this is the future, then, of, of the Catholic Church, more power going to lay people. Absolutely. Do you, do you agree with that? I absolutely agree, and I think the priests do as well, and I've heard them say this many times, that it's the time of the laity. Brendan's daughter is in a coma, and uh, we are praying that the Lord would wake her up. She's had a small operation. Janice's healing sessions attract the curious and the desperate, but mainly the faithful. She can't speak or she's just in a slumber. For the healing to work, you must first believe. And by experiencing healing, or even witnessing healing, faith in Jesus and in Janice grows stronger by the day. I've had for five years, and I was very ill. And Whatever's going on, it has worked for Neve. She's no longer on any medication for Crohn's and believes that it will never return. She has no doubt who is responsible. I believe that illness is called dis-ease, disease, dis-ease in the body. It's where things aren't running f um, properly and I do believe okay. that they actually are as, a, are as a result of an emotional malfunction or imbalance. I believe that because I remember the time when I got Crohn's my, it was the, one of the hardest times of my life. My back was against the wall and my world fell down around me. And it manifested itself in me physically. So I think that Christ didn't remove that like that because this was an opportunity for him to actually hold my hand and let me understand and to teach me. And I think sometimes he has to bring you to your knees for you to really trust in him and believe in him. Because it's quite an extreme route though, isn't it, to bring you to your knees? Well, put it this way your faith will heal you. In every reference in the Bible, when you read about healings, Jesus refers to faith, okay. you know? Okay. I don't, you don't get one without the other. Okay. <laughs> you know, because if you don't believe he can do it, you know, and I don't think it's anything that you do to yourself, but how can you believe someone will heal you if you don't believe in them, you know? I was curious about the technique of speaking in tongues. According to the faithful, it is the language of the Holy Spirit. To some, it's gobbledygook. Because when we're children, we know how to express ourselves. You know, we, we, blah, 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 this kind of thing. And you don't think about what anybody else is saying or, yeah. or you don't care what you sound like, you know. So this is our language to teach us how to speak like that again. And what does your mother think of you singing in tongues in the shower? Um, Have the neighbours heard you? The well, first time my mum actually heard um, that I got the gift of tongues, actually. Um, we were in the car and she's like, go on, say something in tongues, go on, say something. And it's kind of embarrassing because it does sound like gobbledygook, you know. Go on, say and something. And it just sounds different for different people. Some more. Um, I have no idea what I'm saying, but whenever I pray like that, I get um, a really deep relief. Um, so, but it is supposed to be an, a perfect expression of prayer, and anybody who receives the gift of tongues is a confirmation from Christ himself that you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit and are anointed by him. So do you feel special that you can speak in tongues? I definitely believe that God has a plan for me, and I have no doubt that my healings are the beginning of his plan. When there's talk of cures and miracles, all the sceptical questions come to mind. Surely there is a more rational explanation. That at least is how I felt, but then I met Mary Leahy.
so you've got your medical Mary showed me her medical records. She had cancer of the intestine for eight years. Despite several operations, the tumours kept coming back. According to her consultant, her survival and health today is nothing short of miraculous. And when the doctors give up, Lord, you come in, Lord Jesus, and you are the healer. I went into the hall on that Easter Sunday. We worship and adore you. They all prayed then with me, and people at that prayer meeting thought they would not see me again. They just thought that was the end of it. Actually, I laid down on the floor, and she prayed over the tumour, and she could see the tumour. It was the size of a light bulb, she said, a big light bulb, and she, she could see it. And then after a while, when we continued praying and telling it to get out, she could see that it was losing its grip. It's, you know, it was kind of on, on to me, and it had lost its grip, and it did get out. And you're feeling physically... I'm feeling fine, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, yes. I went back nursing then. I was a psychiatric nurse from me. Seven, in 76 I got married and then they were looking for more nurses and I came back then in 2002 six months after being put on palliative care You must have great faith that you uh, believe that after the healing that um, the cancer will definitely not come back but it's likely that it might but That's what the world will tell me but Jesus said I am not a God that I would lie and he will not break his covenant Psalm 89 says he will not go back on his word. No. Whatever I die from, it won't be cancer. Do you worry at all that the people who come to visit you are in a very vulnerable place? Some of them are, anyway. And that they'd almost believe in anything. People have free will. And when they hear what I do, they can always say, no, thank you. Um, I can say my own prayers or mass is sufficient for me or I think that I can be healed um, you know, by the medical uh, profession and of course they can. So you don't feel you're praying on desperation? Most definitely not. I'm praying to the master, the divine physician. I'm praying to, to, to Jesus who can do anything. All things are possible with God. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Mm. Mm. I was speaking to somebody who, um, who is part of your healing group and feels her cancer is gone. Yes. Um, and she says to me, it, she is absolutely adamant that it's not going to return. Yes. And when I hear that, I'd worry. There's almost a certain naivety there. You know, um, it could come back. Cancer can return. Yes, but you see, this is the difference where you are thinking carnally and we, are, we have faith. That's the difference between absolute faith in the healing. It will never return. Are you, ad are you absolutely sure? Absolutely sure that the Lord will not, re not give her back the cancer, but allow the cancer back. That's a huge thing to say to somebody. You know, you've been cured through me and therefore do not worry, it'll never come back. That's, I'd, I'd, I'd worry about that. I'd worry that somebody wouldn't take their medicine, you know, to, to, to deal with the cancer, or they wouldn't go back to their doctor. Yeah. No, healing always, we never tell people or recommend that they ever go off medication. The Lord gave us medication, as well as um, miraculous healing. He gave us both. It's all available to us. Mm. He gave us, you know, the aspirin, that, that's the bark of the willow tree. The Lord is here to enhance our lives, and he said, I came to give you life in abundance, and abundant life is happy. And the scriptures keep telling us, Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and he repeats it again, I say, rejoice. And are you rejoicing? All the time. Totally, especially these last few days. See you. You like the cameras, don't you? Love them when I'm talking about the Lord. Ask me to talk about anything else and I'd shrivel up. I but don't know about that, Thomas. I would. <laughs> talking about the Lord, I'm ecstatic. Oh. Thanks.